Hi guys, we want to continue our reading journey and today's story is The Love Filter of Ike Schoenstein. Let's begin. The blue light drugstore is downtown between the Bowery <coughs> and First Avenue, whereas the distance between two streets is shortest. The shortest. The blue light does not consider that pharmacy is a thing of brick, a brack, sand, and ice cream soda. If you ask it for a painkiller, it will not give you a bonbon. The blue light scorns uh, the labor, the labor-saving arts of modern pharmacy. It macerates its opium and percolates its own laudanum and parag paragoric. To this day, pills are made behind its tall prescription desk. Pills rolled out on its own pill tile, divided with spatula, rolled with a finger and thumb, dusted with calcined magnesia and delivered to little in little round pasteboard pill box. The store is on the corner about which Covey's of rage plumped hilarious children play and become candidates for the cough drops or soothing syrups that wait for them inside. Ike Schoenstein was the night clerk of the blue light and the friend of his customers. Thus it is on the east side, whereas the heart of pharmacy is not glance, there as it should be, the druggist is a counselor, a confessor, an advisor, and able and willing missionary and mentor woes whose learning and respected, whose accrued wisdom Is venerated, is venerated, and whose medicine is of often poured, and tasted, into the gut, gutter. Therefore, ice kiss. Corniform. Bespectated into the gut gutter. Therefore. Oh, sorry. Therefore, I kiss. Corniform, bespectacled nose and narrow, knowledge boat fin figure was well known in the vicinity of the blue light, and his advice and notice were much desired. Ike roomed and breakfasted at Mr. Riddle's two squares away. Mr. Riddle had a daughter named Rosie. The circum lotion has been in vain. You must have guessed Ike adored Rosie. She, she tinctured all his thoughts. She was the compound extract of all that was chemically pure and affectional. Dispensary, dispensatory contained nothing equal to her, but Ike was timid, and his hopes remained insoluble. 
in the mass mainstream of the, his backwardness and fears. Behind the corner, he was a superior being, calmly conscious of special knowledge and worth. Outside, he was a well weak need, need. Poor blind, motorman crushed, crushed, rambler with ill-fitting clothes, stained with the chemicals and smelling of socotrine, aloes and valentine of ammonia. The fly in Ike ointment, trees welcome, par, red trope, was Chunk McGowan. Mr. Magono was also striving to catch the bright smiles tossed about by Rosie, but he was no outfielder as Ike was. He picked them off the bat. At the same time, he was Ike friend and customer. They often dropped in the blue light drugstore to have a bruise painted with iodine or get a rub rubber plaster after a pleasant evening spent along the poverty. One afternoon McGowan drifted it his in his silent easy way and sat calmly smooth faced hard indomitable Good natured upon a stall. A stool. Ike, said he, when he his friend had fetched his mortar and sat opposite, grinding gum, bezening to a powder. Get busy with your ear. It's drugs for me if you got a line I need. I can scan the cons countenance, countenance of Mr. Magowan for the usual evidences of conflict, but found none. Take your coat off, he ordered. I guess already that you have been stuck in the ribs with a knife. I have many times told you those dagos would do you up. Mr. McGowan smiled. Not them, he said. Not any dagos. But you, you've located the diagnosis all right enough. It's under my coat, near the ribs. Say. Ike. Rosie and me are going to run away and get married tonight. Ike's left fore, forefinger was doubled over the edge of the mortar, holding it its steady. He gave it a wild rap with the pest, pestle, with the pestle, but the felt, but felt is not. Meanwhile, Mr. Magor's smile faded. The look of perplexed gloom. That is, he continued, if she keeps in the notion until the, the time comes. We've been laying pipes for the gateway for two weeks. One day, she says she will. She same evening, she say she's Nixie. We've agreed on tonight and Roses stuck to affirmative to the affirmative this time for two whole days but it's five hours eight yet till the time and i'm afraid she'll stand me up when it comes to the scratch you said you wanted drugs remarked ike mr mcgowan looked ill at at ease and harassed a condition opposed. A condition opposed to his usual line of demeanor. 
he ma he made a patient medicine almanac into a roll and f fitted it with unprofitable carefulness carefulness about his finger i wouldn't have this double handicap make a false start tonight for a million he said i've got a little flat up in harlem already with churros and demons on the table and kettle ready to boil and i've engaged pulpit pounder to be ready at his house for us at 9 30. it get to come off and if rosie don't char change her mind again mr margowan seized a prey to his dubs i don't see then yet said i kid shortly what makes it you that you talk of drugs or what I can be doing about it? All men riddled don't like me a little bit. Went on to an easy suitor, bent upon marshalling his arguments for a week. For a week he hasn't let Rosie step outside the door with me. If it wasn't a losing a border, border, they'd have bounced me long ago. I'm making twenty a week, and she will never regret flying the coop with Chunk McGowan. <coughs> you will excuse me chunk said said Ike. i must make a pre prescription that that is to be called for soon say said miss mcgowan looking looking up suddenly say Ike, and there a drugs of some kind some kind of powders that will make a girl like you better if you give them to her. Ike's lips beneath his nose curled with this scorn of superior alignment in light in light enlightenment. But be before he could but before he could answer, McGowan continued. Tim Lacey told me once that he gets some from a cropper uptown and fed them to girl to his girl in soda water. From the very first dose, he was ace height, and everybody else looked like they thirty cents to her. They was married in less than two weeks. Strong and simple was Chunk McGowan, a better reader of men that Ike was could have seen that he, though frame, though frame was strung upon five wires. Like a good general who was about to invade the enemy's territory, he was seeking to guard every point against possible failure. I thought, went on Chan hopefully, that if I had one of them powders to give Rosie when I see her at supper tonight to midnight brace her up and keep her form. Reneging on the proposition to skip. I guess she don't need a mule team to drag her away, but women women are better 
at coaching that they are at running basis. If you sniff it, sniffle, work just for a couple of hours, I'll do the trick. <clears throat> When is this foolishness or running away to be happening? asked Ike. Nine o'clock, said Mr. McGowan. Suppers at seven and eight, Rosie go to bed with a headache. At nine, old Parvenzano lets me through the his through throw to his back right yard. Where there is a board of the board of Riddle's fence next door. I go under her window and help her down to the fire escape. We've got to make it early on the pre actual account. It's all that easy if Rosie don't bulk. When the flag drops. Can you fix me one of them powders, Ike? Ike Schoenstein rubbed his nose slowly. Chunk, said he. If it's of drugs of the nature that pharmacists must have much carefulness. To you alone of my acquaintance would I entrust a powder like that but for you i shall make it and you shall see how it makes rosie to think of you ike went behind the preposition prescription desk there there he crashed to a powder tooth slow slow build tables tablets Each containing a quarter of grain of a grain of morphia. To them he added a little sugar of milk to increase the bulk and folded the mixture neatly in a white paper. Taken by, by a needle, his this powder would ensure several hours of heavy slumber without without danger to the sleeper. That he had it handed to Chunk. This he handed to Chunk McGowan, telling him to administer it in a liquid, if possible, and received the heartily, heartily thanks to the back, backyard lodging war. The subtly of Ike's action. Subtly of Ike's action because apparent upon the rectal of his subsequent move. He sent a messenger from Mr. Riddle and disclosed the plans of McGowan for eloping with Rosie. Mr. Riddle was a stout man, brick dusty, of a complexion and sudden inaction. Much obliged, he said briefly to Ike, the lazy Elish loafer. My own room, my own room, just above Rosie's. I'll just go up there myself after supper and load the shotgun and wait. If he comes in my, if he comes in my backyard, he will go away in an ambulance instead of brittle chase. With Rosie held in his clutches of Morpheus, many hours deep slumber, and the blood thirsty parent waiting, armed with forewarned, Ike felt that his rival was close, indeed, upon this discomfiture.
open the scout feature. All night in the blue light store, he waited at his duties for chance news of the tragedy, but none came. At 8 o'clock in the morning, the day clerk arrived, and Ike started, started hurriedly for Mr. Mar Mrs. Mar Mrs. Riddles to learn the outcome. And lo, as he stepped out of the store, Hubert Chunk McGowan sprang from a passenger street car, passing from a passing street car and grasped grasped his hand. Chunk McGowan with a victor's smile and flushed with joy. Pull it off, said Chunk and Elysium in his grin. With Elysium. Elysium and his gun. Rosie hit the fire escape on time to a second, and we went under the f the wire at the Ravenders at nine thirty. She is up at the flat. She cooked eggs this morning and blue in the blue kimono. Lord. I how lucky I am. You must pace up some days, Ike, and feed with us. I've got a job down near the bridge, and that's where that's where I'm heading for now. The the powder stammered Ike. Oh that's enough you gave me that's enough you gave me, said Chunk broadening his grin. Well, it was this way. I sat down at the supper table last night at Riddles and looked at Rosie and I say to myself, Chunk, if you get this girl, get her on the square. Don't try any hocus pocus with the throat bread like her. Throat bread like her. And I keeps the paper you give me, and I keeps the paper you give me in my pocket. And then my lamps falls on another party present, who, I say to myself, is fallen in a pro proper affection towards his coming son-in-law. So I watched my chance and dubs that powder of almonds, riddles, coffee, see? Okay, see you tomorrow.